It's no secret that the woods of West Virginia are home to a variety of wildlife. I'm Cody Knapper, and on this week of Record West Virginia, we venture into the hills to get up close to one of the state's most wild and wonderful creatures, the black bear. Black bear are one of the most populated species of bear in the world and are perfectly conditioned to a variety of wooded habitats as their range extends as far as South Florida all the way north into Canada and Alaska. Unlike their cousins, the grizzly bear, who routinely take down large prey, about 85% of the black bear diet is made up of vegetation. However, they are still formidable animals with stout builds as males commonly reach 500 pounds. So black bears are the smallest of the three bears that we have in North America. The other two would be the brown or grizzly bear and the polar bear. Black bears are the smallest, but also the most widely distributed of the three bear species that we have. Uh, a female is smaller than a male. Typically our females here in West Virginia, an adult female will weigh anywhere from 90 to about 150 pounds, but they can get up to 300 pounds or a little bit over that if they have access to you know, a, a very good food source. Our males are, are much bigger at, uh, at adulthood, but they can range anywhere from 150 to 500 pounds or more. We've had a couple of bears in recent years that have been harvested by hunters. One of them weighed just over 600 pounds last year, and then a couple years prior to that, we had one that went over 700 pounds. Black bears are, are classified as a carnivore. Okay, everybody thinks about it, you know, this, this crazy man-eating bear or whatever, you know, that, that's a meat eater. But the bulk of a black bear's diet is actually vegetation, it's plant material. So they're, they're considered an opportunistic omnivore. So they'll, they'll eat meat when they have access to it, but for most of the year they're eating a plant-based diet. In West Virginia, black bears can be found in all 55 counties. Although their reclusive nature makes coming across one of these amazing creatures a rare experience. It is unlikely that even if an encounter does occur between a black bear and a human, that it will result in an attack, as these animals prefer to avoid human interaction. Excellent climbers, black bears will flee up trees to escape perceived threats. Your chances of getting attacked by a bear are very slim. Okay, they're not non-existent, but they, they are very slim. You have a lot more risk in doing other aspects of your life on a daily basis. Um, However, we have seen an increase in black bear attacks across the range of the black bear over the last several decades. So there was a, a study that was published about seven or eight years ago that looked at fatal black bear attacks in North America from 1900 to 2009. The bulk of those fatal attacks, there were 63 of them, were caused by male bears, solitary male bears. Um, the people involved in those attacks were most often one or two people in a group, and the bulk of those attacks were predatory in nature which are rare. That's why, you know, if we look at it, we're talking about a 110 year period and we only had 63 fatalities. One of the things that, that came out of this study is the fact that if you are being attacked by a predatory black bear, you need to fight back. Okay, and we talk about grizzly attacks and they say to play dead, the bear will leave you alone, that type of thing. If you're being persistently attacked by a black bear, you need to fight back because it's probably trying to kill you. Okay, again, very rare. We have had no verified fatalities in West Virginia in modern times. We have more people and more bears in the United States than we've had ever before. Our black bear population nationwide is larger than it's ever been since, since settlement. So um, the fact that we have so few attacks is a testament to the docile nature of a black bear. Black bears have proven to be an extremely adaptable species. Their very diet allows them to take advantage of their growing proximity to humans and the garbage we produce. But one evolutionary adaptation that truly marvels biologists is the black bear hibernation cycle, where the bears will go through long periods of sleep mixed with short periods of arousal in order to conserve energy during the cold and harsh winter months. They go into this state at a time of, of year when food is the most scarce. So it's typically lack of food and, and temperature that drives a, a bear to go to the den. The, there's been debate over the years by, by mammologists about whether black bears are true hibernators because most of our true hibernators actually lower their body temperature by 30, 40, 50 degrees to, to near freezing, but then they wake up throughout the winter time to eat, uh, drink, and actually defecate where bears don't. So when a bear goes into a den in the, in the winter time, it doesn't eat, drink, defecate, or urinate the entire time it's, it's in the den, which may be four or five months. 
um, they don't, unlike what were once considered the true hibernators, they don't lower their body temperature that much. So their body temperature typically decreases four to 12 degrees uh, during the course of their hibernation, and they can be aroused very easily in the den. So when we handle females in the den, they oftentimes wake up, um, they're awake, sometimes they run out of the den when we go there to, to handle them in the spring. But they're really amazing because they recycle all of their bodily waste during that time. So there's been a lot of research biomedical research that's been done on black bears to see how they can efficiently uh, you know, process all their waste without actually urinating or defecating for months at a time. So a bear typically is going to be at its heaviest weight just prior to denning in the fall and then of course it hits its lowest weight about midsummer typically. Which leads to why we have problems with bears because bears leave the den in the springtime of course they've been in a fasting period they're, they're subsisting on green vegetation um, for those first couple months out of the den so if you're you know if you're looking to pack on you know, if you're looking for high calorie foods, human foods are the best place to get it, especially at that time of year when natural food is not available. Bears choose natural food over human food when it's available, which is why we see nuisance complaints decrease in the fall. As mast crops become available, bears move back into the woods and we don't have the problems like we did in the spring. The hibernation cycle also coincides with the end of the gestation period for pregnant female bears. Expecting mothers will give birth during the winter to a litter of as many as five cubs nursing the babies in the den until the spring, when the weather warms and food for the mother is more widely available. You never hear people talking about a herd of black bears. You don't see them in fields like deer, you know, they're not in big groups. Typically bears are solitary for the bulk of the year, except during the breeding season. If you look at the gestation period of a black bear, it's typically, you know, you say, well, if you look at the whole time period, it's seven or eight months, but the actual, uh, the bulk of fetal development takes place in about a six to eight week period because the cubs are then born in the den in the second week of January to early February. Um, and then of course they stay with their mothers for about 18 months. So a female will, will breed every other year, have a, have a litter of cubs every other year. Those cubs stay with her throughout the first year of life, den with her their second winter. And then when she's ready to breed again in June or July the following year, she kicks them off on their own. As a symbol of strength and freedom, there is no better animal to represent West Virginia than the black bear. We hope you enjoyed this closer look at these fascinating creatures, and if you did, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching.